every textbook uh, book I have ever seen for either intermediate or college algebra has two separate formulas for factoring the sum and the difference of two cubes. These formulas are so long and so apt to be confused with each other that it is difficult to remember them over a long period of time. Of course, teachers require difficult things of students on a regular basis when it is necessary. But in this case, it is not necessary, for only a single formula is needed to factor cubes. Let us consider, for example, number one, the expression 8x cubed minus y to the sixth. Each of the terms is a perfect cube. 8 is the cube of 2, and x cubed is the cube of x, and y to the sixth is the cube of y squared. y squared times y squared would be y to the fourth times another y to the second power would be y to the sixth. So if they're all perfect cubes, it doesn't matter whether there's a minus sign here or a plus sign, the process is the same. You take the cube root, I'll abbreviate that C-U-R-T, the cube root of the first term. So the cube root of 8x cubed is the number which we multiply together, or the expression we multiply times itself three times to get 8x cubed. In this case, that would be 2 x, because 2x times 2x gives 4x squared. 4x squared times 2x gives 8x cubed. So the cube root of 8x cubed is 2x. Then the same sign. Same sign as the problem has. So if the problem has a minus, we will use a minus. And finally, in this parenthesis, the cube root of the second term. So the cube root of y to the sixth is y squared. We put all of that into one parenthesis. So this is the, the first parenthesis of the factoring of cubes. And we have a graphic which shows that now. Then we will build a second parenthesis for the factoring of cubes on the basis of that, of that uh, parenthesis. We will rename this A and this B. And we will utilize the things which we put, the expressions which we put, into the front and back of the first parenthesis. We will utilize those in the, in the building of the second parenthesis of the factors of cubes. So the um, formula goes like this. And we have a graphic for that. Okay, so we um, build this parenthesis by squaring the first term here. So that gives us a squared. And so up here we have 4x squared is the square of the 2x term. And then always a plus. No, not always a plus, but always a different sign. Always different from the original. So, so if in this case we have a minus, then the problem will have a plus. And then always the cross product of these two terms which in the formula is a times b,
And in this case, in the case of this particular example, the cross product is 2x times y squared. So that's 2xy squared. Notice that we do not take the sign of the b part because the sign has already be, been determined by the fact that the that the uh, formula says that it's a different sign from the original problem. So the cross product term 2x times y squared gives 2xy squared, and then always a plus. The last sign is always plus, and then square of the last part here. So b squared. And in this case, then, the problem would have always a plus and the square of the b term, which is y squared. When you square that, you get y to the fourth. And so there are the factors of the original cube problem. One factor is a binomial, the other factor is a trinomial. The second factor is always a trinomial, and so the student may wonder, what about factoring it? Will it factor? And the answer is no, it will never factor. It is a prime trinomial, it's a prime expression which will not factor. The reason it won't is because the cross product term is only 2xy squared. Uh, if it were twice the cross product, then this trinomial would factor, but it's only the, the cross product, AB, not 2AB. If it were 2AB, it would factor as a perfect square trinomial, but in this case, it is only the cross product term, and so will not factor. So don't bother to spend any time or effort trying to factor that trinomial. Now, the only formula you will ever need to factor either the sum or difference of two cubes is this one. But, since the main thing which changes is the sign on the middle term of the trinomial, we could simplify this whole formula by saying that whether the sign between the cubes is plus or minus, the sign in the first parentheses is the same, and the sign of the middle term of the trinomial is the opposite. So this gives the formula in simplest possible form, and I hope that you will enjoy it simply being much easier to memorize than the two separate formulas which most books give. Thank you.